Welcome to this introduction to the all-new UI Designer workflow for GL Studio 5.1. We began by creating a new project from a predefined project template. This template contains a number of predefined objects, behaviors, and project-specific tool functionality, including a project-specific run button. When you select this run tool, GL Studio generates the project code in the background, then builds, links, and executes that project. This sample project provides some boilerplate content, including a knob, a button, and overlapping objects. It also provides behaviors for those objects, giving the UI designer a skeleton to work from to create their own application. The build and link actions create C++ code that is compiled to run in WebGL and pushes this code out to a web browser. This allows the UI designer to interact with the objects without having to do any coding or requiring access to target hardware. Now let's start customizing the project. Delete the placeholder objects, access the project art folder, and drag and drop the gauge art into the editor. Notice the gauge face is automatically created and the editor generates a link to the source Photoshop file. Also, all the objects that were in the Photoshop file are created in the GL Studio design. Any changes made after import, such as rotation and location, are captured so they can be reapplied if new changes are made to the source artwork. Let's make changes to the gauge by opening Photoshop and bringing in a few Telltale Art assets. Starting with parking and moving it into position. Then we'll do tire pressure, moving that one to the right side. And finally, sizing cruise control a little bigger and moving it to the left. We can see this linking allows the UI designer to make changes to the art that then show up directly in GL Studio. Here in Photoshop, we apply a naming convention to tell GL Studio these layers should be created as polygon objects. Now, when the file is saved, notice that the asset automatically updates in the GL Studio Editor. This allows the UI designer the freedom to modify source artwork with minimal impact to the design. Now let's drop in a 3D car. Again, drag and drop and watch it insert itself into the 3D canvas. Reposition it to the desired location and drag over a light source so the car model is more visible. To finish off the graphical portion, let's add a background texture to the project and push it all the way to the back using the Draw Order options. Zoom out and center the texture. To make the project more dynamic, let's add behaviors to the objects. A good example is the gauge needle. Select it from the Geometry tab and click Browse to select a behavior to attach to the needle. Notice this needle behavior rotates 160 units over a 240 degree range. To the Telltale objects, we will add an Object Glow behavior. This adds an adjustable glow color to each of the objects based on the RGBA values that modulate with the image map. These values can be defined at generation or modified at runtime. Finally, let's make the car spin using the behavior from the original project template. Apply this behavior by selecting the car and browsing to the behavior. Back to the glowing objects, let's choose some colors. For example, starting with the parking brake, we'll select a red. For tire pressure monitor, a predefined amber. Finally, for cruise control, we'll select a nice cyan blue. Once again, simply selecting the run button generates the code, builds the application, and runs the project. In this case, the project is set to compile with WebGL and runs straight in the web browser. This provides a great mechanism for UI designers to visualize and interact with the objects they create.
Through the web interface, the designer can interact with the needle, change the colors for the indicator glow for the cruise control to yellow, tire pressure monitor to green, and leave the parking indicator at red. Notice the spin speed is zero and change it to 10, but the spin axis is about the z-axis like it was in the starter project. So how do we adjust these behaviors? Where do these behaviors come from? Returning to GL Studio, browse to the folder where these behaviors are and open mygadget.h. This is a file containing the neatly organized behavioral code that makes calls to all the implementations in the GL Studio libraries. Here, make a quick change so the rotation will be about the y-axis. Save and return to the editor. Let's also make a change to the 3D car object and have it spin by default. Run the project once again and we have a working speedometer asset in just a few minutes. This is an overview of how UI designers can create GL Studio based content that allows them to visualize data and allows them to interact with provided behaviors. One last note about deploying the content. Here, we are deploying the project to WebGL with a single button. The new GL Studio workflows allow the programmer to add a custom button to the project so the designer can deploy to any specific hardware platform and or operating system combination required for the delivery. This demonstration outlined the new GL Studio 5.1 UI Designer workflow, starting from a project template, adding art, applying behaviors, and deploying content, all without writing a line of code. For more information, please call or click today.